citizens of Ottawa. GM Yeesh here, and I'm back after a very long week, and I'm ready to continue crushing our rebuild of your Ottawa Senators. And right now, we are up at the re-sign phase after an insanely successful year one NHL entry draft, in which we absolutely crushed it, boys. I mean, we managed to snag quite possibly the best pick in the draft at fourth overall, in uh, D this beautiful stud right here, DeAndre Sanford. Look at this kid, boys. 50 goals, 119 points, a right wing, just what we needed. Remember, he had an A-plus level shot, A-plus skater. His NHL comparison in terms of play style is Patrick Kane. I mean, this kid has a chance to be one of the greatest auto senators of all time. And unlike all the others before him, boys, uh, we will not make the mistake of losing him, right? From now on, any stars that come to Ottawa, however they get here, we're going to make sure they're treated with the respect they deserve and uh we're going to keep them so got a couple scouts uh i'm gonna let that go there were some minor contracts before the draft i should have told you that is that before there were some minor contracts before the draft that i took care of just to save time in the next video just minor league guys really yurko Mahler, just the one-year deals right no one big Gave Anderson another one-year deal. And that's mostly what this re-sign phase is going to be, I believe. Um, let's see. Any big UFAs up? No, nah, not really. Brian Gibbons. So anyone who says they don't want to come back, know in the extension, or they're unhappy like this guy, I'm going to go ahead and release. Simply because I don't want them being cancers in the locker room, right? You don't need that for your youngins. It can stunt their growth. And sets a bad uh, example of what an older, veteranized player should be like. So this kid wants to come back. If he wants a two-way deal, nah, he wants a one-way deal. So all a one-way deal is, boys, I see some confusion about this from time to time. All a one-way deal is basically means that, say you pay a guy $1 million, it's going to count as $1 million whether it's AHL or NHL. But if it's a two-way deal and you send him down to the AHL and it's like 900000 then that no longer counts against your cap space. That's all the uh, one-way and two-way deal is. And obviously, we aren't hurting for cap, but I'm not going to uh, go out there and spend money needlessly, especially with an owner like Melnick, right? I wouldn't be able to sell that idea to him very well. So, Pyarvi, he wants a one-way deal. We'll get rid of him. Uh, Lindbergh, if he wants a two-way. Okay, he does want a two-way deal. Interest in two-way contract is yes. I will offer him one year, 925000 There we go. And that's basically all of our UFAs, right? Now, RFAs, Josh Norris, he wants a two, ooh, he wants a one-way. I'd rather give him top AHL minutes, because remember, he had a stellar year on the fourth line, but I, I'm in no reason to rush anyone, especially this year. Um, this is our tank year, right, boys? This is the lose for Lafreniere draft, so I want to give him a one-year deal. He can log those top six minutes in the AHL, give him plenty of power play time, four-on-four, three-on-three, stuff like that. Put him in situations to succeed. And then next year, he'll be ready for an NHL job. Klimchuk, he wants to come back and wants a two-way. Very nice. And Milanin, uh, You know what? He hasn't touched NHL ice, so I'm not going to give him big, uh, big bucks. I will give him a one-year deal. There we go. 850000 Very nice. Any goalies? Uh, Nielsen is up. But Gustafsson, I believe Gustafsson is ready. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. Minor starting goalie is his role, so we will give him the chance. Now, we want to grow Gustafsson so that he can at least contend for a starting job next season, right? Not this coming season, but the season after. That way, we have a goalie for the future, while this kid that we drafted, Volchinkov, uh, gets to grow in the minors. I'm going to wait a year to sign Volchinkov and a couple other guys, um, simply because I want them to get experience playing wherever they can right if they're not AHL ready I don't want them DeAndre Sanford is clearly NHL ready so he's obviously going to get an NHL contract now the exception is Malikov he's a medium elite left-handed shooting defenseman and medium elites drafted in the fourth round tend to not grow right I want to put this kid in our AHL system give him all the ice time and tools necessary to succeed and grow maybe play him alongside a veteran and hopefully we can get some growth out of him that way Kaliev can return to Canadian Juniors, so I have no problem re-signing him. Very nice. Um, this kid, I believe he had very, very good stats. So if he can have one really good year in the AHL, he might even be NHL ready next season. I don't mind re-signing him. 
And because I believe there's a spot open in our AHL roster, I'll go ahead and sign this low elite sniper. So that basically takes care of all the signings, boys. I will go ahead and simulate ahead. The only guy I'm not sure who's going to resign is um, Lindbergh. And if he doesn't resign, that's fine. I won't force it. I offered him the max allowable. Uh, yeah, see, that's what I'm saying, boys. He rejected it. I'm not happy with where the team ended up in the standings, to be honest. That's perfectly legitimate. Um, I'm not going to force it through. We can easily find someone his caliber to help the minor league grow in free agency or maybe be that 13th forward. Player meetings. Bobby Ryan. Trading away Zach Smith was a tough pill to swallow. Was he one of your best? Oh, Colin White and Zach Smith, two of Bobby Ryan's best friends, both sent away in that trade for uh, DeAndre Sanford. I mean, look, Bobby, we would have traded you right with them, but for some reason Colorado didn't want you. Must have had something to do with that $7.2 million cap hit, whatever you got going on. I will give him demanding. There we go. I was considering asking you guys about buying out Bobby Ryan this season, but I feel like it can wait a year. Um, plus, we need we do need someone to mentor the youngins, right? Someone's got to play those big minutes. And Bobby Ryan scored 20 goals, so he's still an effective player. And Barbario, the bad contract we absorbed from Colorado, says we won't regret trading for him. You know, he will prove we made the right call. Very nice. I'll go ahead and give him demanding as well. Yeah, players tend to respond to demanding the most. Logan Brown, Tomas Yerko, love all these happy faces, boys. Let's keep that up. Drake Batherson will for sure play for us this season. Um, hopefully everyone else resigns. I didn't think there were any problems anywhere else. Yeah, just Lindbergh. All right, boys. So I'll go ahead and show you guys real quick the top three agents. And then I need to do some Paro video editing, draw up a couple trades, and figure out who we need to get to hit the cap floor. Because we have $23 million of cap space. And remember, we can't sign any big free agents. And this is our tank year. So I don't want to sign anyone too good. And with all the young guys and uh, potential players coming into the lineup, I don't want to make any free agent signing to plug any holes. Uh, defense, that right-handed shot is our main concern, but this is the tank year, right? We don't need to fix everything at once. Focus on what we can, and we'll go from there. So these are the free agents. I don't expect us to be too active in free agency this year. Let me go ahead and do some power of video editing, boys. I will go ahead and drop some trades to try and make us, uh, what do you call it, cap eligible. And I will be right back. All right, boys. So I drew up a trade here with the Pittsburgh Penguins. And remember, this goes back to why I didn't want to make that Kessler deal with Anaheim to trade up for the second overall. It's because as long as we have cap space, right, and cap flexibility, then we can take on other teams' bad contracts for only a year or two and then get assets back in return, and that's what I plan to do here to help us meet the cap floor. So I'm in this deal, I'm shipping away Dylan DeMello. He was a minus 25. I gave him the ice time. Um, he had almost 50 penalty minutes. Players tend to stop showing natural growth whenever they turn 27, so it doesn't look like there's much more room for him to grow. It sucks that our right side is getting even weaker, but he's clearly not the answer uh, to play with Shabbat, right? And I want to get as much as I can for him now while he still has value. And I'm going to also ship over the Columbus Blue Jackets uh, second round pick this season. And remember, they finished uh, second last, or they made it to the Stanley Cup final and lost. So their second round pick this season, if it's around there again, since they did keep all their players, it could be as low as like, 59 right so we're trading up at least 20 spots in exchange for just taking on about two years of uh, Erica Branson's salary and that's assuming Pittsburgh doesn't uh, have injury problems right and they need to make this trade they don't have a choice with RFAs to sign like Marcus Pedersen Zach Aston Reese and others so they need to make this deal it can only improve our odds for us and it'll be our third first round pick acquired this season and that will be huge heading into the draft right we have three shots at Alexis Lafreniere. Um, I see this deal as an absolute win. Hopefully Pittsburgh is willing to accept it. Sweeten it just a touch. All right. So usually when it's just a touch, it's just the computer trying to cheese me out of um, a couple assets or something. It's because I have the trade difficulty set to hard. I probably should have it set to medium, so that's more realistic so the computer doesn't... Uh, siphon my assets like this but eh, whatever I will go ahead and throw in this kid he was I believe 
a leftover from the Bacchus trade. I don't need him. So there we go. Trade accepted. On behalf of the Pittsburgh Penguins organization, I accept your trade offer, and we'll see you out on the ice. Very nice, boys. Very nice. And the second trade is significantly less uh, glamorous. Um, it's literally just to help us hit the cap floor and help ice a competitive roster at the same time. So I'm going to bring in a veteran presence in Andy Green. There we go. And in exchange, I just want to send, uh, where was he? The Yankee, yeah, yeah. This kid, Phil Kelly. There we go. He's a AHL prospect that I can't even really play. I don't have much use for him. So I'm perfectly happy with shipping him off to New Jersey just so we can hit that cap floor. And now we have about, I believe, $15 million worth of cap space. I could be wrong. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Um... I need to go ahead and make some minor league signings. I was thinking about trading for Jacob Truba. Not signing him, not offer sheeting him, but trading for him, right, from the Winnipeg Jets. I could see it being realistic. It would insanely help our right-handed uh, defensive side, but at the same time, it goes against what we're trying to do this season. Um, I don't see any point in giving up our assets before we know what we have and what we truly need, right? We can project that... We'll need X or Y, but until we see the product on the ice, I don't think it's smart to give up too much, right? We've already given up quite a lot bringing in the assets we have. I want to see what we have on the ice first. Now, there's a couple a couple big RFAs up this season in Shabbat and Tyranny. <laughs> Tyranny wants to get paid, boys. We might... Look at this. Seven years at 6.1 per season. I don't know. Has he done anything to warrant this? 16 goals? 20, no, not really. He's a solid player. I wouldn't mind having him for that 2C, maybe 3C spot down the middle. But ugh, that's pricey. So contract negotiations with Chris Tierney, that'll be a hassle. And Thomas Shabbat, who I think is our future captain, no doubt. Let me know what you guys think. Maybe Brady Kachuk. We can figure that out after this season. Um, I don't hate that six years at $7.7 .7 million. I want to see if we can get it a little lower. Maybe lock him up for eight years, right? I don't want the whole thing with Carlson uh, happening again. But six-year window might be our best to help bring a cup. Those are the only big RFAs we have up this season. After that, it's just minor guys. A lot of kids I want to give a chance. So I'm going to go ahead and make some AHL signings for our AHL team boys. And then what I will do, because we do need that right-handed shooting defenseman, I will edit the trade blocks, say, hey, look, we're looking for right-handed shot defensemen, and I will sim to the start of next season. If there's no eventful trades, I'll just go ahead, power of video editing, take it all out. But if a good trade pops up, I will stop the video, and we can see if there might be a deal in the works, right? So let me go ahead and do that, and let's get up to the start of next season. All right, boys. So we're up here at the start of uh, year two. I got a couple interesting trade offers, but none of them were right-handed shooting defensemen. I think Vegas even tried to get Batherson from me, and it was a left-handed shooting defenseman at that. So, a couple interesting offers, but none worth biting on. Um, I want to show you guys the lines. This is just for the preseason, mind you. Uh, the computer AI, right? He doesn't see Fog of War. Started Sanford on the first line right wing spot ahead of everybody else. I am so excited to see what this kid is. Uh, I'll go ahead and show you guys the lines. This is just to find out, like, who should play where, right? I know where guys like Shabbat, he's going to be our number one defenseman, right? So I'm going to move him back there. I want to see what guys like Willan and Brandstrom, what they are. Same with uh, Batherson, Sanford, where I need to play them in order for them to have the most growth. Uh, the lineups, they're going to change before the start of the season, right? I just want to use preseason to get a feel for who should play where and get their overall scouted out and boys this year is looking good i mean the number one thing we need besides a right-handed shooting defenseman is a number one left winger look at the top three picks boys all left wingers lafrenay torsten kruger and rickard kartanen all left wingers take your pick so even if we don't get lafrenay which i hope we do right that's the dream even if we don't get there's two really nice consolation prizes. And you have Quinton Byfield, Perfetti, uh, Raymond, Holtz. This draft class is absolutely loaded. 
and the fact that we have three first round picks in it is insane so i'm looking forward to that i know a couple people were saying we might need that number one center but i really like our center depth and remember we have those two elite wingers in kachuk and um sanford already right so i don't think we necessarily need that elite center when we already have two elite players at the top of the uh depth chart it's preseason is here and i want you all to play for your jobs out there boys huh look at that shabbat gain morale so last year if you guys remember shabbat gained morale because of a uh, calming so maybe he's mature this season i don't know interesting last year you had to be calmed down this year you can demand a little more out of him i won't make the decision on who should be captain or uh who shouldn't be captain right i will let them both wear the a for this season boys and we can make that decision together for next season on who should wear the c right maybe we let it play out maybe you guys think it should already be one of chuck or shabbat or maybe it's someone else let me know and uh, let's go ahead and give uh pajo i really like pajo my favorite senator easy that four goal game he had against lundquist was one of my favorite playoff memories in recent years all right so I'm going to go ahead and get the preseason over with, boys. Let's just simulate this, see how everyone does. And let's get up to the start of the regular season. Hopefully we get a couple people's overall scattered out here. Um, it's not going to be everyone, I don't think. But hopefully we get a couple people. Good Branson, minor injury. No one can get sustain a huge injury in preseason. That's why I'm not afraid to overplay them. At best, it only keeps them out for like a day or two. See, same with Shabbat. Very nice. Teams must be cap compliant. We are just barely hitting the cap floor. I think we're like two million above it or something. Chris Tierney having a fantastic preseason. All right. Oh my gosh. Sweet mother of Abraham Lincoln. We drafted an 84 overall. Is that is that even happening in this game? 84. Oh. Are you ki Oh, he's already the <laughs> he's already the best forward on the team. I mean, maybe Brady Kachuk. He's the second best player here. Good gosh. So we don't have anyone else really scouted out. Branny. Hmm. Oh my gosh, boys. We got the best player. We legitimately got the best player in the draft. No one else in that draft was 84 overall. We managed to snag DeAndre Sanford at fourth. That's Elias Pedersen levels of steals right there. Good gosh, boys. All right. Man, I am excited. I am so pumped. So, uh, hmm. Branny. You know what? I might start Branny in the AHL, right? Give him, like, a couple games in the AHL. Make sure his overall is in it like he's completely 100 percent nhl ready and then call him up i don't want to have to start him in the nhl and realize oops he's not nhl ready and then have to send him down right i might do that with branny and is there any batherson is ready right batherson we know is ready balsers uh next this for balsers for guys like balsers and yurko it's less a matter of if they're ready and more of this is their chance to show me something right like, this is the throwaway year. This is the year we're tanking. And I can afford to play those guys. I might not ha be able to play them in the lineup next year. So I'm okay with forcing them into the lineup. Sorry about that, boys. Drop some frames. But we're back now. I was able to get the regular season lines done. First line is going to be the scapegoat line, if you will. Uh, they're going to get the hard matchups every night. Gabrick, Tierney, Ryan. I'm still hoping for Tierney to have a good uh, season, right? He wants that big raise. Prove it to us. Here's your chance. First line minutes. We are giving you our best scoring forward from last year. And Bobby Ryan, a proven 20-goal scorer. Um, here's your chance. You want that big raise? Go out and prove it to us, Tierney. Second line is going to be Sanford, Pajo, and Kachuk. I was thinking about having these three play together, but it doesn't make much sense to have two rookies and a 20-year-old play top six minutes, right? So, third line is going to be Batherson, Brownie, and Duclair. Fourth line, Balsers, Howerlick, and Yurko. D pairings, uh, not much to work with, right? Shabbat, obviously playing top two minutes with Gabranson. And I'll give Olanin the chance. Hopefully, he's ready for top four minutes. If not, can move him down, no big deal. Power play looks like that. Uh, I really like how the power play for the future looks, especially once Brownie's NHL ready. I can't wait for that. Take some pressure off uh, Shabbat. 
he can play a couple less minutes. PK, I want to give Kachuk and Sanford the chance while they're young and see if they can simulate well on the PK, build that chemistry together. Same with the four on four and three on three lines. Very nice. Extra attacker. Looks like that. And Anderson will be our starting goalie. This is the last year of his contract. You guys want him to retire as a senator. Boom. There we go. And our healthy scratches. I was going to have Mahler play instead of Gabrick, but put some respect on Gabrick's name, right? He's a veteran. So what I'm going to do for the first month, boys, is I want to do a real-time simulation because I really want to see how... Um, DeAndre Sanford does in his first career NHL game. We're going to do real-time simulation for the first game of the season against the Washington Capitals. And then we're going to get up to the end of the month. We'll take a look at the players' overalls, and I will stop it there because there's some big decisions to be made, especially with uh, Branny, right, to find out if he's NHL ready or not and whether we should play him or keep him down the AHL. But first things first, boys. Season over against the Washington Capitals. DeAndre Sanford's first career NHL game. Can the rookie perform? Give the people of Ottawa some hope. Give Canada's capital some hope here. First period, 2-2 two to two tie. Uh, Duclair strikes twice. Very nice. Third line, I believe. So Batherson, Brownie, working with Duclair. Very nice. Backstrom, Kempney. It's a very up-and-down game. A lot of goals from the half wall. Second period. 3-3. Three, three. Very nice. Wow, the third line strikes again, boys. Might have found something that third line. I don't know. Like what I'm seeing so far, though. Tie game going into the third period. It's anyone's game here, boys. I know we're trying to tank, but I want to win this game. Screw it. Darn it. Just as I say that, I jinx us. Uh, come on, boys. It's one goal, one shot. Huge kill here. Huge kill. Oh, my gosh. Backstrom. What was I thinking? Trusting the rookies on the kill for the home opener or season opener. Heck sakes, boys. No. Come on. Get a quick one. Ah, it's going to be a too little too late for your Ottawa Senators in the season opener as we fall 5-3 to the Washington Capitals. Look at that. Uh, second, third star. Brownie and uh, Duclair. Very nice. So, pretty good first game. We got some goals. If uh, the rest of our games are like that where it's high scoring but we lose, I'm perfectly okay with that. It means the youngins are getting growth. We just need to add depth and stability to our lineup. Um, we'll have to monitor, keep a monitor on the San Jose Sharks and Pittsburgh Penguins because we do have their first this season. I'm hoping we'll be able to, uh, they'll be early first, right? Wow. Elbow surgery, January 12th. So he's going to, ouch. I've never even seen elbow surgery. Oh dear. Players want to meet. Yeah. People are unhappy. Oh, it's back. It's never mind. I thought it was someone important. Seems the team's in a rough patch. You're not even playing. Why? Yeah, yeah, he likes, yeah, he likes demanding. Very nice. Um, ooh, 0 and 5. Oh, rough start to the year for your Ottawa centers here in year two. I'll go ahead and check out the scouting. Lafreniere still seems to be the consensus number one pick. These two guys are medium elites. A plus shooting, A plus puck skills. Very nice. NHL comparisons: Patrick Kane and Tarasenko. For this guy, what's he got? A plus shooting, but only A level puck skills. So they seem very well rounded. Um, I'm looking more for like that elite playmaker, like Lafreniere, right? Wow, our first win of the season is a convincing one. Oh, Brady Kachuk goes down with a broken nose. So I can go ahead and replace player because that'll just put Mahler in his place. Very nice. Let's get up to the end of this month. Yeah, it went about as how you expect it to. Two and seven. Um, oh, who wants to talk? MacArthur. Yeah, another healthy scratch. I wasn't even sure if he liked demanding. I just guessed. Good performances are something that just come naturally to me, obviously. See, he said this last year, and I did calming, and it worked on him. So should I should I do that again, even though he liked demanding? I don't know. I'm going to try it. Uh, Shabbat's a weird one. Huh. Shabbat is all over the place, man. I, I'm guessing with his morale, and so far I've guessed right. But it is all over the place. All right, so first month is out of the way. Let's go ahead and take a look at the players' overalls. Anthony Duclair, point per game on that third line. Third line has some chemistry. I like this third line. It's... Simulate nicely. Eight points. Yeah, very nice. Batherson is an 81. Two goals, 60. Base, dude. Eight points. Wow. Eight, eight, and 11. How about that? 
So MacArthur, I'm going to swap him with Mahler. Um, Brady Kachuk is back, but he has a minor injury. So I'll just do that for next video. Sanford, seven go. Oh my. <sighs> we might have drafted. Oh, I'm getting way ahead of myself here. But boys, have we potentially found the greatest Ottawa Senator draft pick of all? Uh, I'm, I'm not. I'm not even gonna. Not even gonna throw it out there. Just, just saying. This kid is studly. Let's leave it at that. He is studly. He is a transcendent talent, and we got him at fourth. This is Elias Patterson levels of steals right there. I would have taken. I would take this kid over Jack Hughes. I'll say it. Medium franchise. I don't care. This kid looks like a legitimate stud. Look at his shooting category. Look at it. 93s at 19 years old. 18 years old, basically. Just turned 19. 90 skating. 88 deking. This man is a legitimate, bona fide, generational talent. Franchise talent at the very worst. We have to grow this kid. This kid is a 1 in 10, 15 years. I've never even seen a kid go 84 overall straight from the draft. And I've seen medium franchise potential talents go. This kid is insane. Chris Tierney, oh my gosh. 84 overall. Jeez. So his value is going to be through the roof. Very nice. Shabbat, 89. Willannon, 81. Very good. Um, Branny, this is, the, this is the big one, boys. Is he NHL ready? His role is NHL ready. And the old saying, if you can skate with them, you can play with them. He can definitely skate with the best of them. 88 speed, 89 acceleration. Uh, his offensive categories are elite amongst NHLers, and he's only 20 years old. So is he ready for that jump, boys? Let me know. Give me your input on that. That is going to be the uh, biggest decision we make in the next video. Um, I'm going to stop it here since we need to make that decision, and we need to settle down, maybe move a couple guys around, give a couple more guys ice time or a better look. And I will see you boys in the next episode.